everyone, and welcome to the Town Board Work Session for Tuesday, December 1st, 2020. Tonight, we have our public hearing on the proposed budget for 2021. Uh, but before we jump into that, we had one agenda item that we wanted to add uh, for discussion this evening. Um, and that is the resignation of Councilman Jason Lichtenball. So earlier today, the town board received a letter of resignation from Councilman Jason Lichtenball. His resignation is effective immediately. While we are all sad to lose a valued colleague who brought wisdom, compassion, and integrity to his work on the board, we understand and empathize with his reasons for resigning. 2020 has been an impossible year, and it has made us all more fully aware of the importance of centering health, mental health, and family. We wish Jason all the best, and we thank him for his principled and dedicated service to the town of Newcastle. Under New York State election law, the town board has the authority to appoint someone to fill the vacancy created by Jason's resignation. This appointment will be for one year. In November 2021, the town will hold its next general election, at which point any candidate may run for the remaining two years of the term. So in November 2021, there will be four town board seats on the ballot. The town supervisor, which is a two-year term, two town board seats with four-year terms, and those are the current seats currently occupied by Lisa Katz and by the council members uh, and, and the council member seat that I was elected to in 2017, which has been held by Lauren Levin <clears throat> by appointment in 2020 and will then be filled by Lori Morton by election this past November, uh, beginning in January of 2020. And there will also be now one town board seat with a two year term to fill the remaining two years in the seat to which Jason was elected. So beyond this question about the process of appointing someone to fill the vacancy until the next general election, I wanted to provide some immediate clarity for residents in this community regarding our intentions for this seat, i.e. who would we appoint? Having spoken to my fellow town, fellow town board members, Deputy Supervisor Jeremy Saland, Council Member Lisa Katz, and Council Member Elect Lori Morton, um, our proposal is simply to seek to reappoint current Council Member Lauren Levin, whose appointment was set to expire at the end of this calendar year. This will allow the board to fill the vacancy quickly and with little debate, we hope. Lauren's appointment will provide much needed continuity and stability. The composition of our town board in 2021 will once again be bipartisan with three members, me, Jeremy and Lori elected from the Democratic Party and two members, Lisa and Lauren, both of whom are registered Democrat, Democrats but who ran as Team Newcastle with the endorsement of the Republican Party. Much to our delight, Lauren has agreed to accept this appointment. Lauren is not only a trusted and valued colleague for the town board, her tireless work ethic and her friendly personality have won her many admirers among the professional staff at Town Hall. And we are so fortunate to be in a position to be able to seamlessly fill this vacancy. Thank you, Lauren. So for the month of December, which is a shortened month uh, due to the holidays, we will carry a vacancy on the town board until January of 2021, at which point the new board will appoint Lauren at our organizational meeting, which is our first meeting of the year. And while we are down a voting member for the month, it should be noted that Lori Morton as council member elect has already begun her transition process and has been attending all of our meetings. She's pitched in with creating COVID charts and provided valuable feedback on the budget, the form-based code and other ongoing projects. So thank you also to Lori for stepping up. So that's the statement that I had prepared. Would any of my colleagues like to comment either on Jason's resignation or on um, the proposal to appoint Lauren to fill the vacancy until the next general election in November of 2021? Very briefly, can you hear me okay? Yeah, you're in and out, but <laughs> we can hear you. I apologize to everyone. I, I was in the city, and that's why I'm coming up to the corner back to the back back to Newcastle. So I apologize, but this is an important meeting, as others are. And I wanted to second what uh, you said, Ivy, 
in terms of Jason's service and what he's done for the community and his involvement in the community and how hard he's worked and important it is to him. I do wish him the best going forward, and we certainly will miss him. Um, as far as Lauren is concerned, I, I am beyond grateful that she stepped up uh, and demonstrated of her character and her diligence because she cares immensely. You know, you mentioned before about politics in terms of parties or whoever, uh, support of whomever. Uh, she stands, as is Lisa, as all of us, you know, stand on her own two feet and has been just such a tremendous asset and we're fortunate to have her stay on. And I'm, I'm profoundly grateful. So thank you to all my colleagues. Thank you to Jason for his service. And thank you for, for Lauren for, for stepping up and, and continuing to contribute to the community in such a valuable fashion. Um, and I'll just say briefly, I wanted to, again, thank Jason for stepping up uh, to be on the town board. We appreciate all the work he's done. It um, was too short, but we wish him, uh, or I wish him, you know, a lot of health and happiness in the future and, uh, and hope that all goes well with him. Um, in terms of uh, Lauren, I was kind of bummed that she was going to be leaving at the end of the year. Um, not because I don't love Lori, but because she's just so good at what she's doing. So I think the town, um, in some sense, is, is lucky to be able to keep her. <laughs> so I thank you for, uh, for also stepping up. And, and uh, I know I will be happy to see you on the board every week. And, and you do, you're such a hard worker and you, your, your questions are insightful and you're such a pleasure to work with. So I'm, I'm happy that we are, we are able to keep you, even though I'm, sa I'm sad Jason's going. So thank you. I honestly um, am pretty speechless by all of your remarks. And um, I just, I, I have, it's just been such a pleasure and such a huge um, debt of gratitude to, to work with Jason and, and to get to know him personally um, and professionally. Um, but I, I will say is I, I just thank you all so much for, for your kind words, your support. And um, I look forward to next year um, to serving this community that my family and I absolutely love. Awesome. Thanks, Lauren. So that's all I have to add to the agenda for this evening. So um, then I think we, if we can get a motion, we can open up the uh, budget hearing. Uh, I move to open up the budget hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. So um, just before I turn it over to Rob Deary, I just wanted to provide a couple of comments at the outset um, about the proposed budget for 2021. So um, as we've discussed in the past, the town of Newcastle entered the pandemic in a fortunate position relative to other municipalities. Our finances have remained strong this year. With a healthy fund balance and cash in the bank, we were confident from the outset that we were going to have enough cash on hand to meet our obligations. That said, we acted swiftly in the face of the pandemic to identify variable sources of revenue that would be impacted by the economic downturn caused by COVID, such as sales tax, mortgage tax, summer camps, parking permits, building permits, and tax penalties, among others. We also examined our expenditures and identified potential areas for reduction should further belt tightening have been necessary. So that included things like slashing our road paving budget for 2020 or cutting our, our camps and recreation programs. And I'm proud to say that we were able to maintain those things this year. All along the focus of the town and the town board has been maintaining top-notch, high-quality municipal services while dramatically reducing discretionary spending and trimming every possible ounce of fat from our budget. So how did we do it? Well, starting in March of 2020, really right after the pandemic was named, while other municipalities were still learning about Zoom and figuring out how to shut down their operations and work remotely, Newcastle swiftly adjusted to the new normal. We passed a series of emergency financial measures uh, to address the impact of COVID-19, including establishing purchasing limits, limiting staff overtime, establishing a hiring freeze for any new positions, um, and adjusting the calendar year on our parking permits. 
As a result of these and other proactive measures that were taken by town staff, I'm proud to say that while Newcastle has undoubtedly felt the effects of the economic slowdown, COVID was not as catastrophic for our budget and operations as it might otherwise have been. So back in April, based on the revenue and expense information that controller Rob Deary was presenting to us at the time, the town had projected a net loss of approximately $1.6 million. However, through a combination of higher than anticipated revenue sources, specifically the sales and mortgage tax, as well as the townwide cost saving measures that we went over before, by September, uh, I'm sorry, by November, uh, the town was able to reduce that projected net loss to only <laughs> approximately $233,000. And really to come from 1.6 to $233,000, it's really a remarkable feat. And I just wanna commend our town administrator, Jill Shapiro and our town controller, Rob Deary for their tireless efforts in 2020. Throughout the year, the town board and the professional town hall staff led by Rob and by Jill have continued to consider this crisis from all angles. We've developed different scenarios and projections and we work to create a plan for 2021 that is modest, conservative and focused on continuing to provide the highest quality essential town services. With an appreciation for the ongoing financial impacts of COVID-19 on Newcastle residents, the town board provided the following direction regarding the 2021 budget. The town must provide excellent municipal services without increasing the tax levy. And despite the unique challenges that were presented by the pandemic, I'm pleased to report that the proposed budget that you will hear about this evening includes a 0% increase in the general and highway tax levy. I cannot say enough about the work that Rob and Jill and all of the department heads did to accomplish this goal. It certainly wasn't easy, but it was the right thing to do for residents of this community and they got it done. So I'll let Rob walk you through the details, um, but suffice to say that the town had to employ a series of what I have called pandemic cost saving measures to improve efficiencies and Jill more simply and more honestly calls difficult decisions. So our forecasted revenues for 2021 will not rebound to 2019 levels, and we know that. And there are contractual and obligated expenses that we will have in 2021 that will increase, such as employee benefits and retirement and contract other contractual expenses. We cannot avoid that. So to accomplish our goal, what did we do? Well, first, the 2021 budget reduces our staffing by four positions. Now, we're not laying off staff. All four positions are either currently vacant or will become vacant during the course of the year and they will not be backfilled. Second, we've allocated a total of $1.2 million from fund balance for the 2021 budget. Of this total, $500,000 was already in the financial plan to offset debt due to recent borrowing. For example, for the recently completed uh, downtown Chappaqua infrastructure project. This year, we've allocated another $700,000 from fund balance to offset the anticipated revenue loss due to COVID-19. Fund balance is essentially a rainy day fund and it's raining. But as Rob will describe, this is a modest attribution of fund balance and it still leaves a healthy balance for any future rainstorms. There are cost saving measures that are embedded in every department and Rob will go into greater detail about them in just a moment. This is my first budget as town supervisor and it has like everything else this year been a bit of a trial by fire. Preparing the town budget during the COVID-19 pandemic has been an enormous challenge. The impacts of the pandemic are difficult to predict and the budget presented a complex problem for us to solve. But I believe that the budget that Rob and Jill put together successfully controls our discretionary spending and accommodates the uncertain revenues that we will face in 2019. This budget is conservative, it is careful, and we are fulfilling the promise that we made to residents at the outset of the pandemic to keep the tax levy flat. So thank you to Rob and Jill for your steady hands and your experience guiding our finances through these challenging times, both in 2020 and in preparing for 2021. The town, is new, the town of Newcastle is incredibly lucky to have you guiding our ship through these waters. 
And I will say again, I am personally indebted to both of you for your friendship and support in addition to your vast knowledge and expertise. So with all of that said, it is my pleasure to introduce our town controller, Rob Deary, to present the 2021 proposed budget. Rob? Great. Thank you, Ivy. Thanks for that great introduction. Uh, thank you to the board members, both current and future that are here. Um, before I get into the budget presentation, just one other bit of good news that I'll pass along. Uh, the town is an opportunity to refinance two of our prior bond issuances. Um, we have the opportunity to save about $40,000 a year over the next 10 years each year. Um, and we went through the rating process with Moody's last week. And once again, we have been reaffirmed as a AAA municipality, which uh, that's the highest rating we can get. And that plays into our savings and the low interest rates and being able to refinance. So um, in, a, in a pretty bad year, we have had some decent financial news over the last few months and, and that adds to it. Um, right now I'm gonna uh, share my screen. There we go. Okay, so to start with, we always talk about the budget timeline. It's a very lengthy process. Um, I won't go through each step, but I'll tell you that we do start in the middle of July, and that starts off with a meeting with department heads where they're given three years worth of prior information, and they are asked to um, formulate their projections for the coming year. Um, after that, the process then continues with uh, the department heads meet with both uh, Jill and myself, and we kind of fine tune their requests. Um, at that point, it becomes the tentative version of the budget. That's the first version. And that's the first one that the town board sees. That's basically the town administrator's budget. And uh, that's presented to the town board in October. And the department heads then have an opportunity to meet with the town board and uh, justify any of their requests and answer any questions that the board may have. Um, that leads to later in October where the town board will make any changes to the tentative budget and it becomes a preliminary budget. This year, November 4th, we set the preliminary budget and we set the public hearing for this evening. Um, it is anticipated that we will adopt the final budget next Tuesday, December 8th. Okay, we're now in the 10th year of the tax cap. Um, and the tax cap refers to the amount that the town is able to increase the tax levy. Um, you heard Ivy talk in her introduction that the town did not increase the tax levy for the general and highway funds, and that is correct. Um, the tax cap is what we can increase the levy. It, it, it does not cap the percentage, which um, is a function of the assessed value of the town. Okay, in the 10th year of the cap, the town has never needed to override the cap. Um, that's something the board I know is proud of, I'm proud of, and, I, and Jill as well, that we have been able to provide budgets that um, not only provide the services that the town residents require, but we've also been able to add to fund balance over that time period and in order to be able to pay for some of these capital projects that we have. Uh, the tax cap number is always the lesser of 2% or the rate of inflation. After a couple of years of 2%, um, the, the number for the 2021 budget is only 1.56%. Um, another number that goes into that calculation is what's called the tax base growth factor that measures uh, the growth in our uh, assessed value. Uh, the growth factor for 2021, you see is 1.0079, again, down slightly from 2020. Based on that formula and adding in the prior year's rollover, the town could have increased the tax levy, that's the total levy for all the funds, 859,000 and remained still under the cap. Um, the actual levy increase this year was 
a little over 93,000. And the reason that we talk about the general and highway were up, uh, were a flat increase, but there's still a total levy increase is because some of the special districts and in particular, the Northern Fire District and uh, a couple of the enhanced ambulance districts. Um, this just shows the calculation for the numbers that I just gave you. Um, if you look at the starting number, the, the middle column, which was 2020's actual levy, um, we had that tax-based growth factor first, and then the 1.5% tax cap. Um, we then add the carryover from prior year. Um, each year that you do not reach your tax cap, you're allowed to roll that amount over to the next year. So we were able to roll over 339,000, giving us the total tax levy limit for the year of about 22.8 million. And the preliminary levy was uh, 22,117,000. So we were about 766,000 under the cap this year. This chart shows the historical look, <clears throat> excuse me, over the last 10 years, uh, the blue line just shows the total tax levy and the pink line is the tax levy increase as a percentage. And as you can see, over the last 10 years, the 2021 budget represents the second lowest tax levy increase uh, in that period. This is a budget summary presenting um, total appropriation or budget for each of the funds. Um, we talk about the general and highway fund as a combined number. That's because that is the only tax that pertains to every single parcel in town. Um, as you go down the list, the majority of parcels in town, the vast majority are in um, the consolidated water district and also the refuse district. Um, typically, they will be in one of the hand, enhanced ambulance districts, whether it's uh, EMS, the ALS for uh, Chappaqua or uh, Austin Volunteer Ambulance. And then some of the smaller districts, the smaller sewer districts, fire protection district, and some of the drainage districts. Um, the total appropriation or total budget amount is $43,097,000 for 2021. Uh, as you look, the columns to the right of that shows how we're going to uh, fund that total appropriation. The column next to it, revenue of that 43 million, about 18 million will come from various revenue sources. In the general fund, that could come from things like sales and mortgage tax. Uh, in the water fund, that would come from the sale of water. Um, and various other funds have smaller uh, areas of revenue. Next two columns are fund balance. Ivy talked about that in the beginning. And uh, when you take the total appropriation minus the revenue and fund balance, that leaves the amount needed to be raised by tax. And total tax amount for the, the entire budget is about 22,117,000. Just to go over a brief summary of the 2021 budget. Um, as Ivy mentioned, we were able to maintain road paving uh, at the level of about $1.1 million for 2021. Um, that has been a, a tremendous increase. It was, uh, it's been a priority of this board and, and the prior board to this one. Um, we had years dating back uh, seven, eight, nine years ago where we were actually only appropriating two, three, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000 a year to the road paving budget. Uh, we're now up over $1.1 million, and we've been that way for the last two years. This budget also maintains funds for the town board and their advisory boards, uh, beautification advisory board. We've maintained the $25,000 that they've had over the last few years. Uh, they provide the summer plantings that, uh, that you see hanging throughout the hamlet, and they also provide the holiday lighting. Um, the town boards and commissions line, we've increased that up to about $15,000 from $10,000. Um, and that's a, a reflection of some of the newer um, committees that the town has created over the last couple of years. Um, the Holocaust Committee in particular, as well as the CRE. 
um, and the town board special projects line, we're maintaining that at $25,000. That's been used in the past for um, various, um, I guess I would say campaigns that the board has uh, supported. We've put money behind the um, hands, hands on the wheel promotion. Um, I know the town board special projects also funded the uh, electronic lighting board on um, South Greeley. Okay, this budget includes also two police vehicles for this year. Um, we asked the police to tighten their belt. They had originally requested three vehicles or in discussions, they, they had uh, three vehicles. Um, we were able to pare that down to two vehicles for the year. Um, as Ivy mentioned, we did reduce four full-time positions at a net payroll cost of about $233,000. Um, again, those positions were through attrition. Nobody was laid off. Uh, the police officer, the reduction in the officer, this just takes us back to 2019 levels. The 2020 budget added a police officer. Um, so we're just going back to 2019 levels. Um, we had a caretaker and a recreation supervisor position uh, that will be open or actually came open this year and they will not be replaced and a DPW labor position. Um, in spite of losing four positions, the town still has a total work workforce of about 115 full-time positions and their total salaries uh, add to about $11 million. Okay, a pie chart just showing the uh, total budget breakdown by the different funds. You see the town general and highway fund accounts for about two thirds of the entire budget. Um, we were just also on the water meeting. That water district, again, a little over 20%, about $9.4 million. And you see the other smaller districts as a total proportion of the uh, entire budget. Okay, we'll talk about some of the key revenue sources. Um, as Ivy mentioned, uh, one of the areas that was hit hardest, we're, we're able to somewhat control our expenditures, revenues sometimes not so much, and uh, that is the case probably going forward into 2021. Um, I will say that we did have some good news with the third quarter county sales tax. Um, that puts us on target to reach our budget for 2021, uh, rather 2020, and we feel comfortable leaving that number unchanged for 2021. Uh, the state aid mortgage tax, that number will also come in significantly above budget for 2020. So we feel comfortable leaving that number at 925 unchanged from this year. The commuter parking fees, this one is, is a significant source of revenue for the town. Typically the permit fees and then when you add uh, the parking meters, that accounts for about $1.1 million for the town. Um, as Ivy mentioned, one of the things that we did try to, to try to help our budget was we shifted this renewal period from June to December. Um, I don't think we're gonna get quite as much as we were hoping out of in December of 2020, um, but we have shifted this to 2021 as well. And we hope that uh, a year from now with the vaccine and um, hopefully we'll get somewhat back to normal by the end of next year. We still have reduced that number. I, I think that um, COVID has kind of taught us that we're probably going to commute and, and go to work a little bit differently than we have in the past. I think we found that we can do Zoom meetings and phone call meetings and WebEx and various other means. So we are still going to plan for a reduction in parking lot revenue of about $450,000 next year. We're projecting a slight downturn in the building permits. Uh, we had 950,000 budgeted this year. And while we have had a very strong year with building permits, I don't expect us to reach the 950 this year. Uh, we'll probably come in somewhere between 800 and 850. Uh, so we are gonna drop that number just a touch for the 2021 budget to 900,000. Uh, the concession income, and, and this is money that comes in, the primary source of this are the franchise agreements with Cablevision and Altice. 
both of those combined account for about 400,000 out of that 480 number. Um, also lumped in with that number is the cell tower revenue. That should be about 30 or 35,000. Uh, in summer camps, we have dropped that number from what this year's budget was, 465. Again, we're hoping that we're back to normal by next summer. We, we may not be, um, but I will mention that summer camps, there is a, a significant offset in the summer camps as uh, the, the expenditure side of that. Um, if we don't run a camp, yes, we don't get the revenue, but there are no expenses on the other side. And, in particular, the on-the-go on camp, which uh, which features trips to baseball games and water parks and those types of things. Um, a lot of expenditures associated with that. So we do feel comfortable leaving that number there. And, and if we're not able to reach that, it'll be somewhat offset by the um, lack of expenses on the other side. In the highway fund, really only one significant source of income, and that is our state aid from CHIPS. Um, we leave that number unchanged at 225. We typically budget just the chips portion of that. Um, over the last several years and, and 2021 included, we receive what's called Paved New York and also Extreme Winter Recovery Funds. Um, those are not guaranteed. The chips money is guaranteed. Those other two sources aren't, which is why we only budget the chips amount of about 225. The water fund, uh, the, the significant sources of revenue in the water fund are water sales, uh, both within the town and water sales to Pleasantville. We've dropped those numbers slightly. Um, nothing particularly scientific about those projections. It's just that we had a particularly wet year, uh, excuse me, a particularly dry year over the summer of 2020, which resulted in uh, much increased water usage. Um, we kind of expect if you look historically, usually a typically dry year would be followed by one a little bit wetter. So we've just reduced the revenue projections uh, slightly for 2021. And the refuse fund, again, compost and mulch sales, we have been reducing the usage of the horizontal grinder and uh, we're continuing that through 2021. So we're expecting uh, a, a decrease of compost and mulch sales of about $15,000 and yard waste is the other significant revenue source in the refuse fund. Okay, showing where the revenue breakdown is of that $43 million, uh, just a little over 50%, 51% comes from property taxes. Um, you see sales tax accounts for about 8% alone. Um, water sales about 17% and departmental income. Uh, these would be things like parking permits um, and summer camp revenue, those types of items uh, that accounts for about 10%. I'll talk about a couple of the key expenditure items. Um, these are expenditure items that affect multiple funds, uh, including employee benefits. That is probably the largest single source outside of uh, payroll personnel costs. Um, our health insurance, we actually, on a $4.9 million health insurance budget, we only expect an increase of about 57% this year. Uh, the town maintains two health insurance plans. The majority of employees and retirees are in our MEBCO consortium, which is a shared service that we have with um, right now six other municipalities and school districts. Um, Rob, I'm just gonna interrupt for two seconds. For the health insurance, what you meant was not 57%, but 57,000. 57, yeah. Huge yes, difference. You are correct. No, not 57%. <laughs> I, I, it's somewhere in the area of 1%, yes. Sorry about that. Um, but the town's membership in the MEBCO consortium has allowed that particular uh, segment, we expect a 0% increase, a flat um, health insurance increase, which in this market is, is excellent. Um, the town's performance within that consortium, it's a self-funded consortium where the town um, minimizes its top end risk by sharing the top end um, 
risk with other municipalities and school districts that has allowed us to keep those health insurance costs low for the town. We do expect a significant bump in the New York State retirement contributions for the town. Um, unfortunately, when they took the snapshot uh, with the projections for next year, they took that on March 30th, which is or March 31st, which is the end of the New York State fiscal year. And on March 31st, the stock market and all the investments were at, at about as low as they were going to be for the year. Um, fortunately, they've all rebounded at that point, but the projection was taken at that point in time, which will result in uh, a higher increase, about $285,000 over the prior year. The town over the last, I believe it's six years, Jill, that we have joined New York State Insurance Fund for our workers' compensation coverage. Um, we've been able to actually drop that projection slightly next year by about $4,400. But uh, when you look at what our renewal was back in 2014 um, with the prior carrier, our renewal quote was over $900,000. And the town has been able to cut that back. That has been a renewed focus of management of Jill and the department heads to uh, focus on safety measures, uh, state insurance fund and FOA and SONS have helped with trainings and uh, various other seminars and, and we've been able to keep those costs at about that level for the last few years. Um, one other thing that doesn't show in the expenditure side, it's on the revenue side, but because of our claims history, the town, I think two years ago was accepted into a safety group where we actually share in the dividends based on our performance or, or the overall performance of the group. Last year, I believe the town realized about $65,000 in dividends coming back. So um, not only have we reduced costs, but we're seeing money come back as well. I feel like, um, you know, I miss Rob in this moment because this was always the time when when Rob would, would talk about the workers' compensation and the work that um, his board did uh, to, to reduce those costs. So, you know, maybe instead I'll just recognize Lisa Katz, who was a part of that team uh, that, that really has led to incredible cost reductions for a number of years. <laughs> yeah, it, it was. It was a difficult decision because the um, we had a good relationship with the, with the prior workers compensation company. We had, uh, they worked with the town very well, but unfortunately the, the renewal they came up with was just not sustainable for us. And, and it was the board at that time that made the change to state insurance fund. And uh, we've been able to maintain those low rates over the last five years, six years now. It was, it was a whole change in culture though, of understanding how safety really just, it does matter. It's not just, you know, not words. And so um, really kudos to our police department, our parks and our, our DPW for really, um, you know, joining the effort because without them, we couldn't have done this. Just a, a couple other um, large sources of expenditures, uh, debt payments. These are capital costs to pay for the capital projects. Uh, that amounts to a little over $3 million this year. It's down 73000 over prior year. Typically, that number goes down each year as principal is paid off and the uh, amount of interest goes down accordingly. And the legal expenses, just a touch under $500,000. Um, Keenan Bean Town Council has uh, agreed to keep the retainer flat for this year. And um, I think the only increase was an hourly rate, but that um, was what it, um, those are expenses that are review fees for some of the planning and zoning projects. Uh, and they're reimbursable to the town. They're reimbursable to the town, so that doesn't affect the town. Um, we lowered the legal expenses just a bit by looking at the last three years of history and each year we were significantly under budget. So we adjusted legal expenses slightly by that amount. Going through some of the other funds uh, in the highway department, again, road paving and permanent improvements. That's unchanged at 1.1 million. Costs related to snow removal, salt, and uh, overtime for the employees. Both of those numbers remain unchanged. 
at 295 and 195,000 respectively. And brush and tree work, unfortunately, as we've seen with the storm over the summer, um, it seems like we're getting more and more of those each year. And we have uh, about three years or two years ago, we upped that brush and tree work budget to 175. And we feel like we need to leave that unchanged for next year as well. In the water fund, the main expenditure costs are, uh, are the costs of the raw water. The town has to, uh, has to pay New York City for that. So um, you see the split there between Newcastle and Pleasantville. Um, each portion that we divide Pleasantville's portion and that goes into their fixed rate so you see for 2021, those numbers are down by about 113,000. That relates to, you saw the revenue drop in the, uh, on the revenue slide as we project uh, lesser consumption for 2021. The water plant operations, slightly over a million dollars, that is Suez, that those are contractual costs paid to Suez to run the water treatment plant. And then you see electricity for both the Croton backup and electricity for the water treatment plant. We expect that to go down. Um, we have had less of a use for that Croton backup than we had initially expected. Um, that number has come down over the last couple of years. And then the last major fund, the refuse fund, the refuse collection 1.175 million, that's up about 25,000 from the prior year. That is what we pay Santa Pro for refuse removal. Um, our contract will go through the end of 2021, at which point we will then have to go back out to bid beginning for 2022. Um, we expect with a lot of the changes in the world market regarding refuse collection and recycling that um, that number is gonna go up probably pretty steeply in 2022. Uh, I think we'll probably put the bid documents together in either the late winter, or early spring and, and go out to bid soon after. And then the other large expenditure source in the refuse fund, the transfer site charges, um, that's the other end of it. So the refuse collection is one end and then we have to pay to dispose of the, the refuse and that's the 525,000. A total breakdown of our $43 million budget. Uh, you see personnel costs uh, just slightly under a third. Uh, that's all personnel salaries, including overtime and part-time employees. Um, contractual services for the town, which would include things like legal fees, that's about 36%. And employee benefits amounts to 21%. Yeah, this is a breakdown just showing what the average taxpayer would pay. Uh, the average tax bill, it's on about 170,000 assessed value home. Um, you would pay $2,680 for the general and highway funds. And this just shows how it's broken down. You see the two of the larger sources are employee benefits and police, about 640 give or take for each of those. Um, I always like to point out that snow removal, $53.60, I think that's a, a bargain. Um, I know most people go to bed at night when you wake up in the morning, your road is typically plowed and you're, you're able to get out and get where you need to go. And those are our guys working all night. And I, I think that's a good deal for $53. Um, you see highway where the road paving comes in, about 321 of your tax dollars goes there and capital projects about $200. Okay, this chart shows the tax rate information for 2021, uh, comparing it to 2020. Um, you'll see up here the top line, the total assessed value for the town dropped by about 4 million from 2020 to the 2021 roll. Um, so you'll see that's gonna actually change the rate. Um, I use this average assessed value of about 170,000 as just kind of a benchmark to have an apples to apples comparison year over year. 
Um, the market value of that assessed value in 2020 is 890,000. In 2021, about 891,000. So you see that our tax rate actually, in spite of the fact that the levy did not increase, the general and highway tax rate actually did increase 1.72%. Again, that's a function of the assessed value. Um, when you look at, we're collecting the same amount of money, but it's being divided over less assessed value. That's why you have an increase in the tax rate. These numbers here, what we talked about earlier, the tax cap again, 1.56 and the growth factor uh, 1.0079. Okay, here I've estimated the total tax bill, again, assuming an average assessed value of about 170,000. Um, you see the purple section is Chappaqua Central School District and Library. Uh, the Lighter pink section is Westchester County taxes. The darker pink are the fire districts and the green are the town of Newcastle and then the lighter green Newcastle special districts. So the average resident is gonna pay up around, I think it's about $27,000 a year for taxes. Um, and you can see the vast majority of those are going to the school district. Okay, my dollar bill chart. Um, again, about 74% of that, of your $100 bill here is going to the school district and library. Uh, Westchester County and the town of Newcastle, uh, General Highway are about the same, a little over $10. And then you see just smaller portions for the town special districts and, and fire protection. And I think it's important here to note that um you know, in addition to the efforts that the town has made to uh, keep our tax levy flat, uh, we heard from Westchester County Executive uh, for their portion of the dollar here, uh, that it is actually their intention to uh, even reduce uh, the, uh, the property taxes uh, to the county this coming year uh, by applying fund balance and, and through the uh, infusion of monies that they've received from, from the CARES Act. So, uh, you know, I think it's important to note for Newcastle residents uh, that those efforts have taken place both by the town and by the county to hold taxes as close to flat as possible. Uh, however, we do not have direct control over the, uh, the budget, of course. We have no control over the budget uh, for CCSD and the library. So uh, if folks are, are looking to their taxes for next year, uh, we have a very small sliver that we are able to directly control. And we have certainly done our part uh, to help residents uh, offset the, uh, the financial losses and, and the impacts that they felt within their own household due to COVID-19. Okay, just a a little note about fire protection within the town. Um, residents within the town receive their fire protection from one of three sources. Uh, it could either be the Newcastle Fire District or the Millwood Fire District. Both of those are um, districts that create their own budget. They're voted on separately. Uh, the town does collect the taxes for them and remits 100% of the money to those two districts. The town has no control over those. Um, I do include those budgets in my budget document for reference, but the town has, uh, has no input there. The Northern Fire Protection is a little bit different. Um, that's actually a special district of the town. Uh, residents within that district receive fire protection services from the village and town of Mount Kisco, uh, contracted for uh, through the town of Newcastle and uh, the budgets are approved at Mount Kisco. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of input with that and uh, the costs are apportioned out to the town. A chart showing the three different sources of fire protection within the town. Um, right now the highest is Millwood Fire District. I think that's representative of the new firehouse they just built. Um, you see Northern Fire Protection 
you see the jump from 2019 to 2020 and 2021, reflective of the improvements being made to the Mount Kisco fire. Um, I think three of the firehouses in Mount Kisco. Uh, you see Newcastle still here uh, at the bottom of all three of those. Uh, yet to uh, improve or to uh, replace their firehouse. And Rob, can you remind me, in in 2020, we applied, I think, $75,000 of fund balance. Well, that's to that's offer. correct. And so that's, we, we are next year as well, correct? But a smaller no. amount? Um, yeah, so we don't, let me just check that, but I don't think there is any fund balance remaining in there. Oh, I thought it was a smaller amount that we were going right. to. Right. It, it could have been 25. 5,000. That sounds right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's important to underscore for, for residents who um, get their fire protection services from Northern, um, you know, the uh, sudden announcement that came uh, after we had already printed our tentative budget booklets in October of 2019, uh, that the of the increase uh, that our residents were going to see uh, for, you know, capital improvements that our residents did not have the opportunity to vote on uh, was, you know, really a shock for um, our town. And we worked diligently uh, with the town, uh, uh, town village of, of Mount Kisco uh, in the time since then uh, to put into place better uh, agreement uh, agreements and communication channels and to improve our ability to going forward have a clearer understanding of uh, these these upcoming uh, potential uh, increases uh, and and what the impacts would be to our residents um, and so you know our town board had to apply seventy five thousand dollars of fund balance last year because we felt it was unfair to our residents to have them experience this jump in the way that they did. Um, and, and we did our part to try to, uh, you know, soften that blow as it were. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, certainly we're continuing to look at that issue. Um, you know, we did, um, as promised last year when we presented the budget um, and discussed this issue in work session, you know, we did investigate whether there were other alternatives available. At the end of the day, though, the conclusion that we came to uh, was that, you know, the health and safety of, of our residents has to come first and that the service and the response time that we would see from Northern um, could not be matched by any of the alternatives that we looked at. And so, you know, that's, I just wanted to provide a little extra um, explanation of what we see there. Yeah, and I wanted to add anything to that. Yeah, you're, you're correct. So, um, and, and that's why the jump. So we use $75,000 of fund balance in 2020. And as the fund balance is, has been reduced, we use $25,000 in 2021. So that's why you see the jump there. We had to make up that 50,000 and uh, there's also an, an increase uh, in the overall budget there too. So that's what, when you see the tax levy increase, the majority of it is the overall tax levy increase. The majority came from the Northern Fire Protection District. A chart just showing uh, the next 10 years of debt service. Um, you can see we had a, we had a borrowing plan. Um, we intend to borrow either um, probably late 2021 or early 2022. Um, if you look at the debt service for 2023, there's a significant drop there. These are when we try to borrow when there's a drop so that it kind of mitigates the whatever increase might be. Um, I kind of look at the prior year as a baseline um, so if we could stay there, obviously if we borrow money, we won't stay right there, but it'll be somewhat offset by that, that decrease. We've got another bump here in 2025 as well. Um, and that's what we use to kind of lay out our fund balance schedule through 2023. We, we took 2018 as a baseline and um, anything, any of the debt service that exceeded the 2018 level, we were using fund balance to kind of stabilize that rate. Uh, speaking of fund balance, this is a chart that shows historical fund balance. 
from 2011. Um, I run this number through 2019, just a reminder that fund balance is something that is updated once a year annually with our financial statements. Uh, it's not something that's a, a rolling number uh, or rolling balance throughout the year. So the last year that I have an actual total for it is the end of 2019. Uh, the most important fund balance number is the pink column, the general fund. And you see back in 2011, we were actually uh, getting dangerously low. We were actually down to about 6% of our overall budget. Um, whereas at the end of 2019, we're up about 40% of our budget. Um, we do have a plan in place. We will most likely need some offset of fund balance to balance 2020. Um, and we have appropriated some for uh, 2021. Rob, can you remind me once again <laughs> of the um, the sort of guidelines that we have received from the state controller's office with regard to what that percentage uh, should look like and should not fall below? I guess. Sure. Um, Fifteen percent is really the the baseline. Fifteen percent of the budget of each fund. Um, so down here we were. If you look in 2011 and 2012, um, we were below 10%, which is not, not a great number. Um, they would recommend 15% for rainy days and situations like we're having right now. Um, when you talk to Moody's, Moody's, uh, Moody's wants it like 20, 30, 40%. Um, but uh, the state controller and our auditors would recommend probably 15% as kind of a baseline. So um, the next chart, when I go through, I'll show you the, uh, the projections for fund balance. And we do maintain, uh, I think even at the end of it, the lowest we're shooting for is about 22 or 23%. So we're um, well above that. And this just shows, like I, I mentioned, um, this is an assumption that we won't gain any fund balance throughout the year. Um, and it factors in the projections of fund balance allocated to the capital projects. And you see at the end of 2023, we still should be above 5 million, which is about, uh, as I mentioned, about 23% of our budget. And that's important to us because that is what is used to help maintain that AAA bond rating for the yep. tax, correct? Yep, definitely. And, and it allows us in situations like this year with COVID, um, I, I think back with Hurricane Irene and Hurricane Sandy, we had significant expenditures those years to clean up the town and some damages. Um, we actually, I think, received six between six and seven hundred thousand dollars from FEMA, mm -hmm. but it took three years and that money trickled in. So we kind of had the fund balance to withstand all that and, and pay for everything in the current year without having to borrow. Um, and then when FEMA money came in, it went back into fund balance. And so it is that that overall balance that gives us the confidence to be able to allocate some additional fund balance this year uh, from our, our general fund uh, to offset those revenue losses uh, due to COVID. Right, and we really believe that's a one-time situation. And, and um, Ivy, you and I have spoke before and I am um, a conservative to pessimistic budgeter, uh, especially when it comes to revenue. So. Um, I'm fairly confident in the numbers that I have put in the budget, and I really would expect to do better than that, but uh, that's kind of my worst case scenario. So if a couple things go better than expected, um, we probably won't need to use the amount of fund balance that we've allocated. Yeah, I mean, it seems to me that the real wild card is the, the parking passes, you know, which really just this year, you know, we kept thinking give it a couple more months, give it a couple more months, and we're gonna to start to see a resurgence in the number of applications um, and the number of people commuting. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that just didn't bounce back for us, unfortunately. And with this kind of second surge that's hit now, 
um, that kind of slowed everything down. I, right. I think that's going to have a, probably I mentioned to Jill earlier, I think it might have a positive effect next year, a little bit too late, because if we do get back to commuting, maybe by June, um, you know, we'll probably sell some half year permits. So we'll, we'll probably end up with more revenue next year than we're expecting. Uh, that doesn't help us this year, but. Um, oh, that's interesting. Cause they'll buy half of next year and then all of the following. Yeah. All right. Well, that'll be a fun little bump that we can <laughs> possibly look forward to. I shouldn't even say it. Jill's shaking her head. Like, don't say it. It's like when I say it's been a light snow season and you're like, stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we, we've done remarkably well with sales tax as well. So if you remember, um, I think it was August of 2019, Westchester County added the additional 1% local sales tax. We um, obviously couldn't foresee COVID, but we we didn't kind of put all the money in that the county said we would expect to receive. And I'm glad that we didn't right now and we didn't for next year either, but if, uh, if the county's projections, if the economy bounces back and the county's original projections hold, uh, we will probably exceed sales tax revenue for the year too. So. Amazing. so I think that's the end of my presentation. I will stop sharing and can answer any questions that anybody might have on the board or anybody else. Does anyone on the town board um, have any comments or questions? I, I had just a quick comment. I just wanted to thank Rob and obviously the Ivy and Jill and for really doing a phenomenal job with this. And also thank you for your patience. I'm, I was in the car before and now I'm here, but um, it really is a testament as, a, as I've said many times, Rob and the budget, you do a really great job. And thankfully that's where we are, where we are today that we can be comfortable. Um, I will. I will say not to not to push buttons here, but there's been a lot of discussion without jumping into about the form-based code and what it's going to do to our taxes. And we've had 100 plus people here on any given date. We've discussed it. Yet I see on our budget that we're keeping a flat levy. Uh, we have three three attendees. So uh, that's a, it's a little disappointing when people, you know, are obviously rightly concerned about our, our taxes. While we don't make up as much as the school budget, we still have a significant impact on the community in terms of what people pay out of pocket and to live here. But again, we have three people here and we're keeping the levy as we are. I think it's a credit, especially during this time. So Rob, thank you very much. And I would wish that the community would get involved in this process too and being equally concerned because this is nonetheless an important thing that uh, they should be paying attention to. But thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I, I want to, I feel like people should be shouting from the rooftop celebrating um, the work that went into this. So it was, it's phenomenal. And we're really lucky to have you guys. Thank you so much. You guys did such a great job in very difficult circumstances. Yeah, Lisa, Jeremy, Ivy, um, like they all stole my words basically because <laughs> I mean, Rob, seriously, like, I, it's just, you're also just so great to call and explain things because a lot of these financial terms are really complicated and just going through the presentation, anyone can understand this and, and you do it so well. So I thank you so much for that. Great. Thank you. And, and Lauren, I've talked to you a few times and yep, I, my, my, I always answer my phone. My door is open. Um, I actually enjoy talking about this. Um, and I, I do understand that it's not always intuitive, um, especially when you're talking about the fund balance and money back and forth. And it's uh, not easily understandable. Fund accounting is, is different even for anybody that understands accounting. Fund accounting and municipal accounting is a bit different than anything else that I had ever done before. So um, I get it. So this is a public hearing. And uh, we do have three attendees who are with us. <laughs> so if anybody, oh, we do have a question. Fabulous. Um, Carrie, if you can bring Robert Fleischer into the conversation, please. Am I here? You're here. Hi, Rob. How are you? Okay. So just a couple quick comments. One on Jeremy's comment. I think it, the lack of attendance here is kind of a reflection upon it's also can be viewed as a compliment 
to the the, uh, the quality of the budgeting that's been done by the town over the past several years. It really has not been, I think, a controversial issue in a while. And I think, you know, I don't know how far back that goes, but I know that it seems like in the past seven, eight years, it's been getting, it's been handled very uh, adroitly. And uh, I think the town's done a very good job and I have nothing but good things to say about Rob. So, and the entire team that works with him, including the town staff, I think uh, you should take the lack of attendance as, as a sign of confidence and nothing more than that, <laughs> or nothing less than that. Uh, the other question I have is, based upon where we are right now, where are we in terms of year to date, in terms of over or under budget for where we see uh, the potential contribution to, I guess, to fund balance, because that's where it goes at the end of the day. Uh, what's our current projection right now? So we, we talked about that. I think that was, um, was it last week? It seems like so much has happened, but we did projections for last week. And, and um, you know, I've updated those three times uh, throughout the pandemic, I think April, September, and November. Um, at this point, we stand about a little over $400,000 uh, deficit, I think, in the general fund. And uh, we were expecting about $175,000 surplus in the highway fund. Um, so right now, about a net of maybe, I think, 225, 230 off the top of my head. Um, again, I feel like if a couple of numbers come in a little bit better, we could improve on that. Um, the town has done an excellent job of reducing expenses. Um, I, I, if you told me a year ago, we could have done that. I'm not sure I would have figured out how, because I feel like we always have a very lean budget. Um, we have been under the tax cap for years. We haven't used much fund balance um, for years. And, and um, we've been able to fund the, the budget, you know, naturally. And, um, but I guess we did find a way to save and we have continued to do so. So, and so just why I understood what you were saying, you're saying that we're going to add $225,000 to the fund balance or we're going to, we're going to draw down. Probably draw down, probably okay. draw down combined okay. general that, highway. That um, would be my expectation given everything that happened this year. And I don't, I think that to me, that sounds completely reasonable. Yeah, that's very reasonable. To, you know, to get an update on, on that number. Yeah, I mean, I, I was concerned, as I know the board was back in April, and we just really didn't know when things would open back up. And we were very pessimistic with sales tax. I know the county, I know George was extremely worried at that time about his sales tax. Um, we have seen sales tax and then mortgage tax. Uh, that payment should probably come in in about a week, but I expect to exceed budget by about three hundred and fifty or seventy-five thousand dollars in mortgage tax this year. Um, I've seen the figures, even though we don't have the payment yet. So um, well, those were, there were certainly a lot of moving pieces. And I think if there was ever a rainy day, this year was certainly a rainy day in a lot of facets. So, uh, Rob, please don't beat your, yourself up about it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Thank you very much. Thanks. Lori, did you have a question? I do, uh, for you and for Jill. And um, it is, what do you think, you know, what are, what are perhaps some pain points uh, kind of induced by this uh, particular, particularly scrupulous year in terms of uh, conservative spending that we would, you know, in, in better times like to um, be able to put money toward? My four positions. Yeah, I think that's Did it. That hurt. We have, um, this staff has has pitched in. Um, you know, I don't want to say we're short staffed, but people are doing a lot and um, and they've taken to that and really uh, the department heads and the staff and everybody's been great about it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we, we feel that at times. Um, and I feel that would be the, the pressure point. And, and going forward, we would hope to, um, you know, we would expect revenues to rebound. Um, I mentioned that we reduced the purchase of one police car this year from what we originally requested. Um, 
you know, I think, I don't think there were a lot of vehicle purchases. I think a couple maybe in the water fund. Um, and BART has a schedule, has a 10 year schedule for that. So, um, and, and there's a little bit of play in there too, because he'll put something on the schedule. It doesn't mean sometimes it still runs and they'll get to the end of the useful life, but it is still running. It's still operable. Um, we don't have to replace it. Um, and a lot of times we'll look at that and we might say, okay, we have three dump trucks that the useful life ends next year. Well, we don't buy them all in one year. So we might buy one next year, one the following, one the following. So um, we would just hope numbers would rebound next year so that we would not have any gaps in, in our equipment or anything like that. Um, yeah. We have been able to maintain the road paving. I think that was extremely important that we were able to do that. Um, because yeah. the thing with, with the vehicle replacement as well is not only do you start getting into more expensive repairs, but as, you know, Jeremy points out on a regular, you know, this is like a really big deal is that we've discovered that there is this, you know, residual value mm -hmm. through selling these vehicles at auction. And so we get our money back that way and it helps defray the cost of the new purchases. So, you know, it's not like, you know, we're just walking away from something there. There is value there. Um, even when, when we are in a position to, to replace it as per the, the schedule. So, it's all good. Oh, Rob has another question. Okay, I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? We can. Hi, Rob. Okay. One other question I forgot to ask. What no, is we're, the, thrilled, we're thrilled to have you. Keep them coming. There you go. There you go. <laughs> the, um, without knowing, I know we don't put it on our balance sheet, but what is the current balance of the, I believe is a, of the Summit Greenfield $1.5 million fund? That, 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 that's a, a separate fund, correct? If I, where, where does that stand right now? Oh, we did this. And I don't remember. Um, Jill, I'm looking at you. We 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 did the numbers on this we back did. March. Remember, and the town board had a work session. Yes, yes. We we can get them. That's a pretty easy number to get. Yeah, right? Rob, Rob Rob can get that for you. Rob Deary can get that for you. Yeah, you he, he did it. He did a chart. He may even be able to find it. My guess is less than ten seconds. My he, guess is you yeah, he has the Excel. He absolutely has. Rob Fleischer, did you ask that question? Not, not too long. Hold on. Rob, did you ask that question because you want to give us all raise? Is that what it was about? No, I was just curious to, to, to where it stands. Oh, I, I thought I thought it was a, a plug. Look, look you, uh, I think you guys are already blowing the bank. What is it, 5000 or is it 10 I don't know what it is, but certainly overpaid, right? <laughs> Uh, about 531,000 is remaining. Less. So that includes not, not necessarily everything that we've spent, but things that we've committed to spend, uh, or contracts that we have signed. Um, so about 531,000 is what's, and that was updated not too long ago. Okay. And is the cash amount significantly higher than that, or just a little bit higher than that? Uh, about 182,000 higher. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you. That's actually a great question. So thank you for that, that addition. Anyone else? So we could close the public hearing, keeping um, it open for written comments through the end of the week. Um, let's say by um, noon on Friday, which would be the... Friday the 4th, does that work? Yep. Um, and uh, we will put it on for a vote um, on the 8th. 
We just so move that. You need a motion from Jeremy to, yeah. So there would uh -huh. be a motion to close the hearing and accept written public comments until the date Joe just mentioned. Thank you so much. <laughs> Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. And that Bob, you did a fabulous job. As always. Yes. Um, and then we've got our resolutions. Oh, our administrative items. We can go through these. Um, just payment of claims, authorization to close a number of uh, capital projects. Yep. Um, and adoption of minutes. There was a, um, a change to the November 10th uh, minutes that were submitted. I think it was last week, Lauren, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or two weeks ago, um, a gentleman chimed in that uh, he had made a public comment. Lauren had included it and it wasn't quite right. So she went back and listened to the tape. So that's been revised and also for November 24th. If in, there are no further questions on that, there are the um, the resolutions that have been sent, vetted by council, and they're ready to go. Shoot, I'm sorry, I had them open and I, I closed them on accident, so now I gotta just find them. I have them. You want me to go? Yes. Shoot. Sure. Uh, I move to approve the payment of claims in the amount of four hundred seventy-seven thousand three hundred seventeen dollars and forty-eight cents listed on the summary pre-check writing report and detail voucher detail report, each prepared on November 28th, 2020. Checks will be issued and mailed to each claimant listed on Wednesday, December 2nd, 2020. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I move to authorize the controller's office to close the following capital projects based on verification that they are complete and that there's no fund balance, fund balance, project revenues minus project expenditures, remaining for each project uh, as listed in the attached resolution. Uh, furthermore, Town Controller Robert Deary concurs with this request and recommends corrective action be taken so the projects can be closed by adjusting budget to actual figures if necessary, as outlined in the attached memos from his office dated November 30th, 2020. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Want me to do the next one? Uh, I move to authorize the controller's office to close the DPW truck wash facility capital project based on verification that the project is complete. The controller's office has identified there is a project deficit of $9,143.37 to be covered by a surplus that exists in another capital project. Furthermore, Town Controller Robert Deary concurs with this request and recommends corrective action be taken so the project can be closed by transferring the funds to cover the deficit and by adjusting budget to actual figures as outlined in the attached memo from his office dated November 30th, 2020. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I move to adopt the November 10, 2020 as amended and November 24th, 2020 town board minutes. Thank you. All in favor? Hi. Hi. I move to accept the resignation from Jim Smith from his position of Airport Advisory Committee member, effective September 6, 2020. Second. All in favor? Hi. I move to authorize the appointment of Robert Derry to the Newcastle Community Media Center Board for a two year term, effective January 1st, 2021 through December 31st, 2023. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, go ahead. I move to authorize the reappointment of the following members to the respective board commissions as the dates and terms as indicated below. Um, do I need to go through all of them or is it sufficient to say as reflected below? Nick? All right. I move. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, so as reflected in the resolution. Okay. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, that's the last one. <laughs> okay. So that concludes our uh, town board work session for, uh, for this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we need to move to adjourn? Uh, uh, that's a good one. Let's move to it. <laughs> I move to adjourn. <laughs> second. Not second yet. All in favor? Aye. Aye.